Abram, whom we know better as Abraham, is down. He's done what God said to do. He took his wife Sarah and left his family and went out into the dangerous world all alone following this unknown God. The journey has made him rich, but God's promise to make him a great nation, that's starting to ring a little hollow. Abram's getting old and he still doesn't have a child. So God asks him to look at the night sky. Look at the stars, Abram. Count them if you can. Your people will be like that. And as one of my professors at college liked to say, and look at it, it came true. This isn't just some old tale. This came true. Look at the stars. Your people will be like that. That's how many people you will be able to call yours. Of course, I'm sure Abraham was mostly concerned about what people were mostly concerned about in that time, biological offspring, a biological legacy that he would live on through. And even though that's still fine, there's another way to make people your family. Once upon a time, in a large forest, there was a very furry bunny. His name was Barrington. Barrington was not a very handsome bunny. He was brown and speckled. His ears didn't quite stand up right, but he could hop and he was, as I've said, very furry. In a way, winter is fun for bunnies. It gives them the chance to hop around in the snow. But it was also sad for Barrington because winter's the time when animal families would gather in their cozy homes and celebrate Christmas. And as far as Barrington knew, he was the only bunny in the forest. Hmm. Hop, hop, hippity hop. Barrington made tracks in the fresh snow. Hop, hop, hippity hop. And then he cocked his head to see the designs he'd made. Bunnies, he thought to himself, can hop, and they are warm too, because they are so very furry. It was getting dark though, and Barrington decided it was time to go home. On his way, he passed a large oak tree. He heard chattering above. It was a squirrel family. They were having their Christmas party. Hello up there, Barrington called. Hello down there, the squirrels chattered back. Are you having a Christmas party? Barrington asked. Oh, yes, came the answer. It's Christmas. Christmas Eve. Everybody is having a Christmas party. Can I come to your party? Barrington asked. What are you? Are you a squirrel? No. I'm a bunny. But you can't climb trees. Oh. No, I can't, Barrington said, but I can hop, and I am very furry and warm. We don't know anything about that, the reply came, but we're sorry. You can't come to our party if you can't climb a tree. Oh, well, said Barrington. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, the squirrels chattered back. And the unfortunate bunny continued his way home. As he reached the river, it was beginning to snow, and he heard more noise. The beavers, the beavers were having their party in their house of mud and sticks. Maybe the beavers will have me to their party, Barrington thought. Hello, he cried. Who's there, came the reply. Barrington Bunny. A moment later, a slick beaver head poked out of the surface of the water. Hello, Barrington, the beaver said. Can I come to your party? Barrington asked. The beaver thought for a second and said, well, of course. Can you swim? No, Barrington said, but I, I can hop and I'm very furry and very warm. I'm sorry, the beaver said. I don't know anything about hopping and being furry, but you have to be able to swim to get into our house. Oh, 
Barrington said. Well, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, called the beaver, and he disappeared under the surface of the water. Well, the wind was starting to pick up, and there were now tears in Barrington's eyes. Furry as he was, even he was starting to get cold. But then as he hopped, he heard exciting squeaking under the ground. It was the field mice, the field mice. They were having their Christmas party. Field mice, Barrington called, field mice. But it was no use. The wind was too much. The field mice couldn't hear him. Barrington sat on the ground in tears. What good are bunnies, he thought. What good is being furry and warm and being able to hop if you don't have any family on Christmas? He was so upset he even started to chew on his bunny foot. But suddenly, he saw standing before him a great silver wolf. The wolf was the most beautiful animal Barrington had ever seen. Large, powerful, with fire flashing in his eyes. For a long time, he said nothing. He just looked at Barrington with those eyes. And then slowly, deliberately, he finally said, Barrington, why are you sitting in the snow? Because it's Christmas Eve, said Barrington, and I don't have a family, and bunnies are no good for anyone. Bunnies are good, the wolf replied. They can hop, and they are very furry and very warm. What good is that, Barrington sniffed. It's very good. It's a gift bunnies are given, a free gift, with no strings attached. And every gift that's given, the wolf said, is given for a reason. Someday, Barrington, you will see why it is good for bunnies to hop and to be warm and furry. But it's Christmas, Barrington sighed. I don't have a family. The wolf sighed, Barrington, all of the animals of the forest are your family. And with that, the wolf vanished. He was just gone. All the animals of the forest are my family, thought Barrington. Into the night, Barrington worked. He found the best stick he could because, and that was rather, hard because of the snow. And then hop, hop, hippity hop, he took it to the beaver's house with a note on it. Here's a good stick for your house. A free gift, no strings attached, from a member of your family. It's a good thing he, I can hop, he thought. The snow is getting deep. Barrington dug and dug and dug and found enough leaves to make the squirrel's house warmer. Hop, hop, hippity hop, he took them to the squirrel's house with a note on them. Here are some leaves to make your house warmer. This is a gift, a free gift with no strings attached, signed a member of your family. Barrington started for home. He was getting a little worried. A blizzard was now beginning. And then, just as he realized he might be getting lost, he heard it. A tiny squeak. A tiny field mouse lost in the snow. And the little one was crying. Don't cry, little one, Barrington said. Hippity hop, Barrington was right by his side. I'm lost, the little mouse sobbed. I'll never get home. I'll freeze. Oh, you won't freeze, Barrington said. I'm a bunny. And bunnies are furry and warm. You stay right there. I'll cover you up. And with that, Barrington lay on top of the little mouse and hugged him tight. The little guy cried for a bit. But soon, he was fast asleep, snug and warm in Barrington's fur. Barrington only had two thoughts on that night. It's good to be a bunny. Bunnies are furry and warm. 
and as he felt the heart of the tiny mouse beating beneath him, he thought, all of the animals of the forest are my family. The next morning, the field mice found their little one asleep in the snow underneath a dead bunny. The beavers and the squirrels, they still wonder what family member left them such wonderful gifts. Eventually, the field mice left Barrington, leaving his body in the snow, alone in the howling wind. And that is when the wolf did come and stood there without moving or saying a word all Christmas Day until it was night. And then he disappeared into the forest. A story by Martin Bell from The Way of the Wolf. We make people ours by making them our family. We make people ours by using the gifts we have been given for them. And even when we doubt it, we have all been given gifts. I doubt that Abraham was all that excited about some of God's promises. I think he was probably mostly excited about the promise of a biological family. But one of the promises that he had been given was this. Your people will be a blessing to all nations. We are part of that blessing. And our Savior has shown us how to live realizing that we are all family, that all people are our family, and living out that truth. Go live that truth, and may your family number like the stars in the night sky.